Hey guys, it's Matthew from Land Rover Life. I'm very lucky to be here today. It's uh, Davis Performance, um, just outside of Sydney at Annan Grove. And Bruce has got over 30 years experience uh, fixing Land Rovers. Not only does Bruce do servicing, but the other things that Bruce does is uh, spare parts. And Bruce has got a fantastic selection of uh, used and new parts um, available on his uh, website. Little issues at the moment on our 2004 Range Rover HSC six cylinder diesel is uh, some little squeaks that are coming from the um, the belts or pulleys uh, inside. So we're not quite sure yet what those uh, things are, but we're going to have a bit of a look. The other issue we've got is uh, there's a bit of a squeak down in the um, one of the lower bushes at the back, and uh, that's been causing a bit of a uh, loud squeaking noise um, as we go to speed humps in car parks on, on bumpy roads. Uh, the vehicle is going to get a service today by um, one of the guys here. There's a guy called Anthony. Um, Anthony is going to show us some interesting things as we go through. So there's been a bit of a squeaky belt but now we just had a bit of spray with some WD-40 and um, it was just as simple as that so it wasn't anything too catastrophic. So we're just um, going to take the oil filter out and it's uh, well and truly due for the chain. Okay, look at that. Pretty normal. Yeah, okay. They all come out a little bit black like that. Okay. And we'll clean out the housing a little with open seals. Yeah. And jam a new one in it. Oh, awesome. I forget. What sort of issues do you get, like, at say 300,000 kilometres? What sort of things are starting to wear out on these particular models? On this particular model, to be honest, they're actually pretty good. Oh, okay. Um, wear and tear wise, providing they're being maintained properly. Um, yeah. The motor is really good in these. We've had a couple with like injector problems and turbos yeah. and things like that. Um, but with these high mileage, Providing they've been serviced correctly, yeah. good fuels, keep on top of your filters, things like that. Okay. BMW originally made it, didn't they? They're not actually a Land Rover motor. No, this is the BMW motor. Yeah. Um, same as what they put in, like the those X5 things. You actually sell spare parts as well. On yeah. Your website. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Bruce has got a whole heap of stuff on there, some oh, stuff that we make, um, yeah. oil cooler kits and yeah. uh, computer upgrades and things like that. Oh, yeah. So everything's on there. Try and provide a service as best we can, say if you're travelling and you happen to break down somewhere yeah. or even remote areas if you need parts and things like mm. that. If you ring us up, let us know what you need, we'll oh, that's handy. post it to you and yeah, that's very you know, handy. hopefully within a few days you've got yeah. it and back on the road again. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So, so um, with the brake fluids, Anthony, um, how, how often should people change? the um, brake fluids in terms of mileage. Yeah, 50 to 70,000. Uh, okay. I guess the alternators eventually do go eventually, but um, it will. it's sort of hard to know when. Power steering fluids obviously um, be looking at around about sort of the mileage. So, or you just keep fucking it up. You can top it up, you can go off the if you've obviously got a leak, yeah, yeah. you can go off the colour oh, okay. stuff again. Mm -hmm. Looking for it to be nice and red and clear okay. still. So that's pretty clear. Yeah, so it is actually pretty clear. Yeah. If you're pulling it out, it's like a thick body, it's yeah. muddy, it's yeah. like brown and brown. Yeah. So I'm trying to flush it out. Yeah. You let from the tank, outlet to the high pressure common rail. Feel okay. common under there. Yeah. This little guy is a water sensor. Oh, okay. So that'll sense when you have a certain amount of water in here, you'll have a light pop up on the dash saying, whoa, mm. you picked up a bad batch of diesel somewhere. Oh, okay. And you're filled with water. Oh, that's yeah. pretty, um, that's totally a, needed. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty clever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. water yeah. is heavier than diesel, so it'll sit down the water. Yeah. 
try and get this off without hurting ourselves. So you guys do new car warranties here as well, don't you? Yeah. It's all just as long as you're doing it by the book and I yeah. since I started here, the stuff they do in their checks, like they've kind of you make up your own checks mm -hmm. according to the book and you add a little more in once you learn mm. about what they wear out and what to look for. Yeah. So it can be a little more in depth than taking it to the dealer. Yeah. So how often do, do you change yeah. the um, the fuel filters, Anthony? So around 15, 20,000 okay. as requested. Okay. okay. So if you change filters too long. Yep. Lines in there. And the newer stuff, people always changing their filter like every 5,000 has changed my filter. Change okay. my filter. There's actually a short life of the filter in the beginning where they're not filtering as much as they should. Okay. Until their, their element is all soaked. Okay. So you're actually getting a portion of unfiltered sediment coming through. Ah, uh, okay. So in this newer stuff, um, these guys changing their fuel filters too quickly, they're mm -hmm. actually killing the fuel systems. Oh, really? Because they're too frequently changing them. Ah, uh, okay. on the common rail stuff, not on older. Yeah. Thing. So you can overdo it you can. with yeah, a particular yeah. thing. That's um, that item. Right, which is mm. totally crazy. It shouldn't be like that. Mm. Unfortunately, it is. Yeah. If, a, if a filter locks up, then it's doing its job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you lose yeah. power, you get a light on the dash, fuel filter light or whatever, it's blocked up, you're like, yeah. oh, it's actually, that's not its job. It's filtered something out. Definitely, yeah. And now I can't go anymore until I change it. I I've noticed the performance of this vehicle. I mean, I bought this vehicle when it was sort of hit around 220,000. 220, yep. And I've noticed that the performance has sort of lagged um, slowly down in yeah. terms of. I don't get that sort of pushy power I used to get. Yeah, so I don't know what that's. So, this running a Bosch system, I think. Let's check. Yep. Okay. So I can see the suction control there on the pump there that's got a Bosch top on it. Okay. It's a green colour. I just know that from working on them. Okay. Uh, low power with no other issues, nothing detectable yeah. in an engine like this can totally be injectors. Ah, uh, okay. So they wear out. They've got a a service life of roughly 125,000. Oh, okay. So if they have never been out and changed, and you've had it from the beginning and you know, yeah, they're due. So okay. they're probably not atomizing correctly, bad pressures. Okay. And if you were to replace all of them, you'd probably find you get a much better back. Yeah. A much better fuel economy, right. economy as well. Oh, yeah, 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 huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference. Is that a big job in itself, or, or not big? Just a little time consuming. Yeah. It's not overly technical or anything. It's yeah. a bunch of bolts you need to replace, and you need okay. to clean all of the chambers correctly. Ah, oh, okay. Is, yeah. is there a, um, a way of like flushing them out, or, or you can't? Well, no, there's, there's a place around that say, yeah, you can flush them. Mm. In my experience, now, not with high kilometer injectors when they're yeah. worn. When they're worn out, they're they're it's, ready. Yeah. It's literally like metal on metal parts that okay. wear out. So no yeah. amount of flushing can build the metal back to the tolerance it as well. Okay. Thank you. So this is the first time that I've ever been under this vehicle. So it's quite interesting to see. The brake discs are actually in very good condition at the moment. So um, there's still plenty of uh, extra metal still left um, on those. The pads are probably the only... Did you mention the pads, Anthony? Was it the pads that needed maybe replacing soon? Or front pads, yeah. there is plenty of meat left on the rear. Yeah. Front yeah. pads, easily within the next 10,000. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd be Reason. looking at them, yeah, yeah. Keep a close eye. So looking at around about 13,000 Ks was the last time it was done. It's not all thick and gluggy. It's, no, it's good. Some guys say that uh, they, they get it done every 5,000 k's. I've man. Yeah. And because it's cheap for me and I don't mind doing it. So yeah. Why not? 
I yeah. don't think excessive oil changes can hurt no. anything. So. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's good. Positive. We've got nice clear diff foil, and uh, the diff foil in the front is nice and clear as well, which is fantastic. So, no leaks as well. Uh, we're just having the gearbox oil uh, replaced, and also the filter, and that's um, obviously going to be done in accordance to the warranty for the, the new gearbox, which was done in 2016. So. So I'm just drain the pan first. No, it's pretty, it's pretty clean, isn't it? Because you never know, there could be some pieces of that. Uh, oh, oh, you're right. Yeah, it went, <laughs> it went straight in my nose, I think. Oh. <laughs> Got a bit of metal on there. Wow. Yeah, fair bit. Not heaps, but. Is that normal or? Yeah, everything I've ever pulled out. It's got that on there. Okay. It's very fine, isn't it? Not. It's like a paste. Yeah. We'll Gee. clean that before we put it back in. And... Yeah. So far, we've had the oil change, we've had the oil filler changed. Uh, we've had the pollen filter replaced. Uh, we've also had the squeak in the front, which was just one of the belts to prevent the belt from uh, squeaking. So if anyone's ever getting a squeak, and the suspension at the back, it's most likely that it's coming from this little, or this bush here. So, there we go. New one is here. He's got well, a tool. I'm, I'm hoping it. with the tool it will actually pull out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's made for this, isn't it? Hey, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, something like this anyway. Close enough. I don't, I don't want to say anything bad for the camera. No. This, this is the exact tool, people. Yeah, this is, this is this. the real deal. <laughs> yeah. We supply them. <laughs> Should start selling them if they're, if they're handy. Well, I'm guessing you would. Yeah, no, the stuff's um, all yeah. available. It's, um, yeah. They're not uh, from Land Rover, they're an aftermarket tool. Whether it yeah. be through, you know, uh, different dealers like Rovercraft, yeah, Car Rovercraft, Craft, yeah. uh, British Motor Imports, places like that. Yeah. They all deal with it. And, yeah. yeah, I've had a few dealings with Rovercraft down in Fantry Gully. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. You would have thought they would have had a, um, a nipple on there to, so you could grease it. Yeah. Well, like everything, it's supposed to be sealed for life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, let me show you. I'm pretty, pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, to so see all the, not that you can see inside, but what it'll be is all inside underneath all the booting and all the rest of it. And you'll probably find at some stage too, whether it's had a split. Oh, okay. Or something in the, in the boot. 
it attracts moisture, water or for whatever from off-roading. If you can see inside there, see how it's gone all rusty. Okay. All right, and that's pretty common. I haven't so. um, got you on film yet. I don't know. We can't show you his face, so we'll show you his bum instead. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I just throw a little bit of grease on there just to yeah. make assembly a little bit easier. Yeah. And it'll make it a bit easier for the next person as well. It'll all get trapped in there, so. Oh, okay. Definitely a very handy tool, that one. Yeah, oh yeah. So I'm guessing you know probably 12 to 15 years life out of that one. <laughs> oh no, driveway warranty. <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy, that stage you have upgraded into another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the manipulation. Do you have to use a torque wrench on one of those nuts too, or, or do you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do that for you now. Because you hear about a lot, a lot of guys who say, oh no, you don't need a torque wrench. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it. and you're, you're that's him. Cool. <laughs> yeah. No, you do. There's places where you do need torque wrenches yeah. and things like that. Yeah, right. places where you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The suspension bolt stuff like that, yes there is a time that it needs to be torqued and things like that, but other times you just give it a good reef. Yeah. So at least that way I know by the time you go on your little trip it's not going to fall off. No. <laughs> Guys here are fantastic. Uh, I can thoroughly recommend anybody uh, to, to use uh, Davis Performance. So that's it. It's pretty much complete. Got everything sorted out, squeaks have both gone, gearbox has been serviced, and engine oil has been replaced, and the filters. Fantastic, really, really happy.